on behalf of the Phoenix Association. Uh, we are here today to talk to Dr. Srinivas Rao Zimka, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, about his research work. So thank you for having us. Um, your fields of research include a phased array antennas, microwave filter design, frequency selective surfaces and data system design. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit about your research and uh, what you are looking to achieve through it? All those topics, whatever you can mention, they come under microwave engineering. Mm -hmm. So, especially in my PhD, my main uh, research topic was filter antennas. So, if you see uh, the basic difference between a regular antennas and phased array antennas, uh, the commercial antennas which we use in our cell phone are mostly like omnidirectional because mm -hmm. they are supposed to be omnidirectional because we don't know in which direction the base station is there. And we have to receive signal from all the directions. So they each single antenna is very small electrically, and their radiation patterns are mostly uh, like a donut shape. It will have a donut shape so that it will receive signal from all the directions. However, when it comes to phased array antennas, they you want your radiation pattern to be more uh, narrow. For example, it should have almost like a pencil beam kind of, or maybe fan beam, especially in different applications they do use these kind of phased array antennas and uh, in olden days what they used to do is they will be having a very big antenna for example some kind of parabolic reflector antenna mm -hmm. and that antenna used to be mechanically scanned or mechanically rotated but uh, as we know that when we are scanning something mechanically uh, obviously the uh, scanning rate is limited so hardly we can achieve the 20 to 30 max or uh, rotations per minute. Mm -hmm. So such kind of scanning rates are may not be sufficient in some of, some kind of applications. So what people started thinking, it was a, it was a very old concept. In 1960s, 50s itself, they started uh, implementing this. Uh, theoretical concept has been there for a long time. But as far as practical implementations are concerned, only nowadays we are uh, gradually entering into phased areas, especially the active area areas, active phased areas. So, they what uh, so uh, the ma major difference between those mechanically scanned arrays and these phased array antennas is something like this. Here we don't change our antenna mechanically. We don't rotate it basically. The antenna is going to be stationary, but the beam itself is going to be rotated. And also that scanning is going to be done within a fraction of a second. So that way you don't have uh, so that way you can achieve more rotations per minute and you can so uh, by doing so, you can actually scan multiple targets also. So these are some of the advantages of phased array antennas. In addition to that, when you actually use phased array antennas, and if you can, since in phased array antennas you can control each array element's excitations, uh, then by doing so, you can achieve a specific radiation pattern that is called actually shape wheel synthesis. Let's suppose you have uh, an antenna um, which is sitting on on the top of a satellite. Now that satellite, if it has to illuminate only part of our country, or maybe it has to illuminate only India, for example. In that case, the corresponding radiation pattern of that antenna should be having a certain shape. Then how to achieve that shape? There actually, uh, it is kind of an optimization problem. So there, once again, we will be using this phased array antenna. There we have to tweak how we are exciting each and every element. So accordingly, we get our required pattern. It is not as simple as I was saying, but uh, it is simply like that. And uh, many uh, one suggestion to all the students is what? Uh, many people are somehow, they are kind of afraid of uh, antenna theory. Uh, but the thing is, many people are very well versed with Fourier transform, Laplace transform, basic signal sense systems, many students like. And even if in the antenna theory also, most of the concepts can be explained using this basic Fourier analysis. If you see, uh, in signal sense systems, we talk uh, in terms of either time domain or frequency domain. And exact same analysis can be done in antenna theory also. Here, instead of saying time domain, we will be using space domain because the antenna or antenna array itself is kind of a function of space. You will be dispersing those antenna uh, elements according to the space and the corresponding radiation pattern 
is actually this corresponding Fourier transform. Let's say you are uh, dispersing various antenna elements, and let's assume that each element is excited with a different coefficient, array coefficient. So, and if you use, uh, I mean, uh, if you define the distribution as a uh, function like a of x dash, where a of x dash or y dash, a of x dash, y dash, z dash, spatial distribution, then the corresponding Fourier transform will be uh, is nothing but your radiation value. There, you don't talk in terms of omega, mm -hmm. like signal cell systems, you will be talking in terms of frequency omega or f. But here, we have a few more definitions like kx, ky, kz. So basically, uh, the major analogy between signal cell systems and antenna theory is there you will be dealing with one dimension for it. But in array antennas or antenna theory in general, depending upon what kind of antenna it is, you may have to uh, worry, I mean, you may have to calculate one dimensional Fourier transform. For example, if it is a linear antenna, if it is a planar antenna, you may have to calculate two dimensional trans uh, Fourier transform and vice versa, and similarly three dimensional. So, so that is the basic uh, introduction to my research area. I think I have to keep on speaking. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, what is your uh, specific research in this? Uh, my research was, uh, uh, as I mentioned already, phase day antennas. In that also, my PhD topic was mainly on uh, uh, grating load nozzle. There is a concept called grating loads. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, this is particularly uh, important for phase day antennas, where we will be using discrete array antennas. So, we may think that we are uh, scanning our beam. So, we will be scanning our beam. But, uh, when you scan all the way, for example, there is a uh, uh, when you are scanning, when the beam is in the pore side or broad side direction, mm -hmm. you can see only one main beam. But, when you start scanning to other directions, what happens is, one more main, main beam will come. That is usually known as grating block. This concept is very similar to uh, DDFT. In DDFT, uh, in signals and systems, you might have studied. You have a signal, continuous signal, and it will be having a Fourier transform. But what happens when you discretize it? What happens to the Fourier transform according to my Christian theorem? It becomes periodic, right? But you, so initially, you had one uh, spectrum, but now actually you have infinite spectrums, which are from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, the same, similar thing happens in antennas also. So, whenever you are using discrete antenna array elements, then you may think that only one main beam exists, which is similar to your one spectrum. But actually, there will be a repetition in the kx domain, which is analogous to omega domain. So, when you are scanning, due to the periodic nature, one more main beam can enter. So, my uh, work was mainly on the grading log analysis. So, uh, then how to so place uh, how to basically uh, adjust spacing between array elements. So by adjusting them, you can actually avoid this grating loss. Uh, so one of the main area was adjusting the, the spacing between the elements. Okay. Sir, according to you, what is the scope in the future for this um, field of research? Uh, okay, this question many students ask, but it really doesn't matter. You have to be passionate about that area. Uh, some people may say that if you work, uh, I mean, uh, if you work in communication related uh, things, you may get very good job and you may get very good salary and so on. And some people say that, okay, in BLSA, you can get much better jobs. But uh, as far as I am concerned, okay, money is important. I mean, I'm not denying the fact that money, so when you are joining a job, probably money is also important, but the same money or even much more money you can earn, but for that you have to be passionate about that. Whether it is micro-engineering or whether it is BNSI or communication, you have to be passionate, then you yourself will come up with some idea. Whether it is money or you are, you don't pressure, the, the intellectual pressure. pleasure. Okay. So for me, it really doesn't matter which area you will be working, uh, but you just be passionate about it. That much money I can tell you. Sir, are you looking for any students to help you out in your research? And if yes, what are the prerequisites you will be looking for? Uh, right now, uh, actually for these prerequisites are, uh, mm, prerequisites 
emphasis for my research are in our curriculum we have this uh, basic PMT grade which is carried in first year or second year. Then we have this electromagnetic fields which is in third year I think if I'm not wrong. Only these two courses are there uh, but in addition to that some antenna related courses are, are also required. And all these topics are usually, they usually come in third year or maybe third year uh, second semester. So usually these are the prerequisites. So if you guys wants, want me to help in my research or if you want to learn something in my area, then I would suggest usually at least uh, you have to finish 3 one. And finally, uh, what is your advice to students who are uh, inclined towards research? That is, they want to pursue research in the future. Yeah. How do they make the most out of their time here? Can you elaborate that question? No, like if uh, the student is interested in to pursue research and is not, not quite sure what to do in undergraduation time. Mm. So what is uh, specifically your advice for them to do? What will be best for them? One simple example I will tell you. When I was joining my my engineering, I wasn't aware which uh, which particular branch I have to take, whether I should go with BC, UT, or Electromechanical. I was more interested in Mechanical, but many people were saying that EC is much better. And at that age, I don't know anything, so I just simply joined EC. And when I joined EC also, I had to go through different, different types of subjects. Uh, but initially, I couldn't get the complete picture to be frank. Up to even until uh, second year also I couldn't get any picture. But once you finish almost your third year, by 3-2, you will be covering lots of fundamental courses. And by that time, you will get a very good, clear picture. And, uh, though it is still vague, but still you can get a better picture compared to uh, second year or first year. By that time, you will be covering lots of topics, for example, related to VLSI, for example, uh, some image processing, etc, etc. So, what I personally feel is, by the time you inherently know, by the end of your third year, you yourself know that uh, which particular area actually interests you. So, you just have to spend some time on it. You just think uh, with a calm mind, you will know that which subjects you like and try to pursue in that area of because by the time, uh, okay, uh, let me finish that story. Okay. By the time I was going to MTech, during MTech interviews, I, I was given four options. One is RF and microengineering, VLSA communications, and power electronics. So obviously power electronics was uh, out of my area of research. And these three also, I was able to uh, pick my topic, RF and micro, because throughout my BTEC, I used to carry only a few books. Throughout my first year, I used to take only one textbook to my class. Okay, I don't suggest you to. Okay, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, I used to carry uh, at least one textbook a day. And uh, some of them are like uh, my integrated electronics by Newton Marcus, which is like a Bible. Still, they consider it as Bible. Uh, and one more thing is network theory by Bangal Kanwar, control systems by uh, Ogata. And one more book was this. Electromagnetic, theory, uh, electromagnetic fields, I think the topic and uh, title I forgot, uh, that is by Joe, Joe Lennon Barbie. The, especially this last book I used to carry throughout my third year and fourth year. And I was so interested in that area because you spend a lot of time on it. So you will know by going through these books, you can see one is from communication systems perspective, one is from MBP that is one more book. So one is from network theory, control systems. So you are covering some major areas of uh, electronic engineering, electronic or electrical engineering. But maybe one or two books will be interesting, more interesting compared to the other books. So that itself will tell you. Uh, so that is one way to ch uh, choose your 